the rush coming, finds T. Higgins, touchdown! That kid cannot be 19 years old. He looks like he's been there his whole life. Truly, we don't carry anything over. It's always about what's next. Go! Shaka laka, shaka laka, come to war, ready! Let's go! Expectations are built a culture that's built on effort. And if we accomplish that every single day, we're going to be a pretty good football team. Our program has won 15 in a row. This team ain't won one. You got to show up every year with something to prove. We welcome you to Death Valley as they celebrate the second national championship in three years. An historic 15-0 season. Clemson just pulling up. Of course, at least two Heisman Trophy candidates in quarterback Trevor Lawrence and running back Travis Etienne. Absolutely stacked on the offensive side. The receiving core, highest ceiling in college football. And a bevy of future NFL draft picks. And Dabo Sweeney taking them out and ready to come down the hill, which we call the most exciting 25 seconds in college football. All week, the Rock is encased behind glass under lock and key. Only on game day, it's bare and set for the pregame ritual. Ladies and gentlemen, the Clemson University Tiger Band. Now we mentioned Texas A&M coming up, Syracuse as well on September 14th. Remember, Syracuse almost upset Clemson here in Death Valley last season. So if the Tigers are to run the table again in 2019, those are two games to circle in red. Presented by Dr. Pepper. And welcome to Death Valley, South Carolina. We have been waiting eight months to say that. I'm Dave O'Brien alongside my partner, Tim Hasselbeck. Great to be with you all season long, Tim. That is a great scene. One of the best you're going to see anywhere. And Clemson is absolutely loaded again in their title defense. They are. And it starts with their quarterback. He's probably the best quarterback in college football. And you alluded to it. Their receivers on the perimeter are also probably the best in college football. We could be in store for some fireworks. You know, they've got great receivers, and they're adding on. And you're going to see a couple of outstanding freshmen, a couple of them tonight, including Ngata and Latson, who may play very early in this game. And talking to the coaches, they expect them to make an impact when they do play. I don't believe it'll take long. Well, the captain's coming out for the coin toss. Of course, on the defensive side of the ball, Clemson produced five All-Americans on defense. Four starting defensive linemen went to the NFL. Three of them were drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. That's the first time that Clemson has produced three first-round picks in a single draft. 80,000 strong tonight here at Clemson. And Clemson has to replace that powerhouse defensive front. The Tigers have over 40 players on this year's roster who were not on last year's. So they're going to get acquainted with a lot of new faces. 
as they make a run at another national championship. Dabo Sweeney doesn't like to use the D word. He doesn't like to talk about dynasty. In fact, he says they haven't even talked about a national championship this year. Instead, he talks about his culture, Dave, and protecting that culture that he has done such a good job of building here at Clemson. Let's go to Katie with Jeff Collins. Thanks, Dave. Jeff, the Jeff Collins era at Georgia Tech starts right now. What was the last thing you told your team before taking uh, the field? I love them. I respect them. I can't wait to get on the field with these guys. They've been through so much. they fought so hard. I'm just excited to see them play hard and compete tonight. Thanks for the time. Best thank of luck. You. Thank you. Dave? Katie, thank you very much. So we're just moments away from the opening kick, and let's get out to Maria Taylor with Dabo. All right, Coach, the model for this team is carpe diem. So how do they have to seize the opportunity to open up at home against an ACC opponent tonight? Just bring our practice to game day. You know, we've had a good camp. We've practiced well. Just bring it to game day. Right, thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you. Maria, thank you very much. Maria on the sideline to cover Clemson here tonight. And Katie George on the Georgia Tech side. And are they ever ready here at Death Valley? Georgia Tech won the toss. They defer Clemson to receive. So Trevor Lawrence and his receiving core, not to mention Travis Etienne, who is one of the favorites to win the Heisman Trophy, the running back. defeated Georgia Tech last season in Atlanta 49 to 21 they piled up 480 yards in total offense in that victory and here come the Yellow Jackets Yellow Jackets very young. Their roster including just 11 seniors. They've had to pull offensive linemen over to play on the defensive side. Joseph Engada, and he's a freshman. The wideout we've been talking about. The coach's eyes light up when they start discussing him. He awaits the kick. And we are underway. to the sideline. Pushed out by Brenton King. And here comes Trevor Lawrence against Georgia Tech in week four. That's when his legend began. Four touchdown passes off the bench. And Dave, he's basically just a stronger, better version of himself. If you talk to Dabo Sweeney, really worked on himself this offseason. It's hard to believe he can get better from what he did a year ago. We'll start the drive at the 35. First and 10 for the sophomore quarterback. And a quick handoff. Trying to spin free. David Curry with the hit. So ETN with... The first carry of the season, last season, averaging just about eight yards per carry. It'll bring up second and 11. Lawrence to throw. Gets Higgins pushed out of bounds. T. Higgins with the catch. And Carpenter. First man to get him, Tariq Carpenter, be a big factor in that secondary for Georgia Tech. When you look, look at these situations, third and short, when you have a, a quarterback that's more comfortable, more command at the line of scrimmage to get you into the right play. Third and three for Lawrence to throw again. Quickly over the middle and broken up by Georgia Tech. Intended for Higgins, Trey Swilling. It's an outstanding break on the ball by Trey Swilling. You see it's just a little slant right there. T. Higgins extending his hands, but Swilling doing an excellent job of keeping that off arm from uh, interfering with the receiver and getting that hand in there to break it up. 
So Will Spires to punt. Juanita Thomas, who set five school kickoff records as a return man as a true freshman. He can be very dangerous back there at the 10. And a fair catch. He fumbles it. Clemson with the recovery. The Tigers pounce right away. And tremendous field position immediately for Clemson. Balen Spector with the recovery. An excellent, you know, sure receiver of the football. Just doesn't judge it correctly. Good coverage there for the recovery. Terrible, terrible mistake early in this game for Georgia Tech. So Lawrence and the offense quickly back out there. Etienne going on tackle. He's dragged down. Caleb Oliver in pursuit got to him. Brings up second and 11. Lawrence again with ETN. The throw short. Ross trying to get outside. Got down close to the 11. And a five yard pickup. Jamari Walton with a tackle. Basically, extension of the run game there. Just flip it out to your talented receiver, block on the perimeter. Essentially, a sweep play. Now you have a third down in the red zone. Remember how big and tall these receivers are. Back shoulder fades, fades into the back of the end zone. Big possibility. Third and six. He'll throw again. Well, there's a short arm swing. Nice grab there by Higgins. Right on the sideline for the reception. This is from our stick cam. And first and goal for Clemson. Chalk the tight end in motion. Lawrence to the end zone. The fade. Broken up by Georgia Tech. And that was Trey Swilling again. A good start for good start for Swilling. It's press man. You see Swilling on Justin Ross. Probably gets away with a little contact to the face mask of Ross. So he's unable to bring that one in, but. They view those as 80-20 balls, not 50-50. Certainly the 20% there for Georgia Tech. They have to feel good about that. Coach Ross made that spectacular catch in the national championship game, that juggling one-handed grab. That'll be on his all-time highlight reel. He's going to kick it. Lawrence for the end zone. First touchdown of the season goes to the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, on a keeper. And the Tigers lead it six to nothing. A six yard rush for the sophomore. BT Potter on for the PAT. Seven to nothing, Clemson. He's six foot six. He's a pocket passer, but they are not afraid to run him on the zone read. Great decision. Walk into the end zone for Trevor Lawrence. Welcome back to ACC Network Primetime Football, presented by Dr. Pepper. Fast strike by number one Clemson, 7 0. Lawrence in from six. And a 
Huge mistake by the Yellow Jackets, so Clemson to kick off. And we will see the pro-style offense installed by Jeff Collins and his offensive coordinator, Dave Patnode. No longer a triple option, no more flex ball for the Yellow Jackets. And Thomas will let that one sail. So who will the quarterback be? This has been a week-long mystery for the Yellow Jackets. Could be one of three guys. Lucas Johnson, the junior. Tobias Oliver, the sophomore. Or James Graham, the freshman. Who's coming out of there? And it's Oliver to lead them out. Primary backup a season ago. Had a great game against Virginia Tech. He rushed for 215 yards on 40 carries. You mentioned three quarterbacks. He's probably the best runner of the group, Dave. Totally different look here, although he'll keep it. And power off to the left side. Tyler Davis bringing him down, and that's a name to know for Clemson fans. Big freshman, 6'2", about 300 pounds from Apopka, Florida. The coaches say he came to Clemson knowing how to practice hard. Two-yard gain. Oliver trying to keep it. He's dragged down and tripped up. That was Isaiah Simmons. Isaiah Simmons, probably one of the best look at linebackers at all of college football. 6'4", 230, and he is unbelievable in space. We mentioned Oliver's a good runner. That's an outstanding open field tackle by the outside linebacker. He's in the conversation for the best all-around athlete in college football today. Third and seven for the Yellow Jackets. Looking to throw. Fires short and complete. Carter, Malachi Carter, and Simmons, another tackle. It's an outstanding idea by offensive coordinator Dave Patino to move the pocket. Remember, these are offensive linemen that are used to blocking option football. Move the pocket so you're not in a traditional pass protection mode. Get the quarterback on the edge. Well done. Pick up the first down. Carter. Typically, their deepest threat. He averaged about 19 yards per catch last season. And the handoff yeah. right through the middle, right down the heart. And that was Jordan Mason with the carry. Mason 6'1", 220 out of Gallatin, Tennessee. Came out of the shoe. Brings up second and one. Low snap. Oliver to keep it. Looking for the sideline. And takes a mammoth hit by Simmons. He wiped him out. I mean, we said it about Isaiah Simmons playing in space. And you look at Oliver. You can tell Oliver is an incredible runner. That is big-time football, and that is why people in the NFL are already drooling over Isaiah Simmons. Picked up the first down nonetheless. Oliver has him moving early. Long play. Thomas giving chase and a big loss. Xavier Thomas, the All-America candidate, terrific edge rusher. That was all over him. Yeah, it looks like it's a zone read, and they're going to read Thomas right here, but he just gets up the field so fast, and he blows up that mesh point before the quarterback can ever put the ball into the belly of the back. Xavier Thomas, another one of those guys that is a freakish athlete and has the ability to disrupt the game. Loss of 11 brings up second and 21. Throwing short. Screen, he's got it. Thomas actually down low and skipped it. Tanner Muse there to cover. That'll bring up third and 21. It's these situations, third and forever. You, if you're Georgia Tech, you're, you're not comfortable passing the football. Getting into these known passing situations will destroy you tonight. So a long third down. Oliver running right. Not much there. 
Chad Smith getting to Oliver. Bringing a fourth down. So Thomas with a huge stop on that drive. Kendrick back. Harvin, an outstanding punter. And he will take it at the 15. 7.59 to go here in the first quarter. 7 0. Tigers. ACC Network Primetime Football is presented by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. And in part by Bojangles Famous Chicken and Biscuits. It's bow time. Well, the tailgating is good. The food is better. And the atmosphere very festive early on here for Clemson. They've taken a 7 0 lead over Georgia Tech. Tim Hasselbeck and Dave O'Brien alongside. Trevor Lawrence already one rushing touchdown here this evening. Top quarterback in the country, taking over the last 11 games of last year as a true freshman. Leading Clemson to a perfect 15-0 record in the national championship. And a handoff through the line across the 20. ETN. That's a six-yard gain. ETN last season, 24 touchdowns. Junior out of Jennings, Louisiana. Does he get short shrift nationally? given all the weapons and Trevor Lawrence. I think he does, Dave, because he's a Heisman candidate in his own right, runs with great power, has great speed, and really is trying to kind of turn into a complete back. You know, I had 12 receptions a year ago. Would not be surprised to see Clemson use him more as a receiver this year. Picks up the first down. So carries early for ETN. He smashed several school records last season. From the gun, play action. Lawrence to roll. Fires. Downfield Higgins, the intended receiver, but overthrown. Good pressure by Chris Martin. Now the Yellow Jackets suffered the tragic loss of 21-year-old defensive tackle Brandon Adams in March. He fell and hit his head on campus, went into convulsions. He could not be saved. He was expected to be a defensive anchor for Georgia Tech. Wore number 90, and Chris Martin, his best friend, is wearing that number to honor him tonight. Katie will have more on that story this evening. Second and 10 for Lawrence. ETN has a hole to the 40. Ball comes loose. Georgia Tech says they have it. But they're saying he was down. And I believe he was down. Really good job of the guys up front creating the hole. It's another zone read run. They end up giving it to ETN. You see here, it looks like that elbow is down, which causes that ball to come out. Another well, gifted freshman receiver, Joseph Engada from Folsom, California. Now into the game, but they are going to take a look at this. So this will be under review here with 6.32 to go in the first quarter. They're going to review it. We'll go to break, and we'll be back with more in a moment. All right, we're going to get the call here from Trey Blake. After review, the runner lost possession prior to being down, and there was immediate recovery by the defense. It would be Georgia Tech's ball, first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Well, Andrew Thacker, the defensive coordinator, told us this week, we absolutely have to have takeaways. They got a big one there. They got a huge one here. As you see, Jordan Swilling punch it out from over the top. ETN's knee is on a defender. That ball is loose. It is a clear recovery. That is a big, big play for this Tech defense. Justice Dingle, the 6'3 freshman from Bowling Green, Kentucky, he got to it first to recover the fumble. So at the 41 yard line, first and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. On that 
flex bone. Georgia Tech led the nation in running last year. They were number one in rushing offense. They're going to look to throw the ball far more frequently this season onto the new offense, the pro style, under Dave Patnode. Two running backs, Mason and Smith, along with Oliver in the backfield. First and ten. So the Yellow Jackets trying to capitalize on an early turnover by the Tigers. Rolling right. Overthrown. Intended for Mason out of the backfield. But for more on a turnover, let's toss it down to Katie George. Well, Jeff Collins is a man with many sayings, but one that sticks out is emphasize and incentivize, and that's exactly what he does with turnovers. We just saw Dingle run over to the board and sign his Instagram handle to the board. He emphasizes turnovers, incentivizes followers on social media. That's 2019 for you guys. You betcha. He'll keep it to the center of the line. Oliver with the carry. And Dave, for your reference, that was at BJ Swilling, so you can give him a follow. I know you were... I know you were searching you know, for him. I absolutely was. Four-yard pickup. <laughs> Turnover number one, and he go to the board. Third and five. Oliver looking to throw. Short and incomplete. Carter, the intended receiver. So decision time on fourth and five. Listen, I think if you're going to play a team that you're overmatched, it would not be surprised if they were aggressive. Looks like they're sending out the punt team. One thing I will say, I'm a little surprised, and we had a third and forever. We had a known passing situation there at third and five. They've talked about playing three quarterbacks. Oliver, the best runner of the group, not the best passer of the group. I wonder if it changes and we see Lucas Johnson, who they believe is a better passer. And yet has never thrown a pass in a college game. Granted, he was injured all of last year. He had a broken foot. Did not take a snap. Harvard to launch it. A knuckler, and they're going to let that one sail. Striking a pile on. So 6.07 to go here in the first quarter. Georgia Tech couldn't do anything at all there with that turnover. Let's toss it down to Maria Taylor. Well, of course, guys, you know, Travis Etienne would not want to be the one that laid the ball on the field, but I saw him afterwards going up to everyone on the offensive line and to his quarter, Trevor Lawrence, saying, that's my bad, guys. That's all on me and get right back after it. Offensive coordinator Tony Elliott says he's become even more of an alpha dog and being more of a focal leader right now. And remember, Tavian Feaster is gone, transferred to South Carolina, so that is big for Clemson, and obviously he's looking to bounce back from that mistake. Well, he's worked hard to become a receiving threat. He's put in a lot of time on the jugs machine, they say, to hone his catches. He's even kidded in practice. Hey, throw me the deep ball. I want the deep one. Lawrence keeps it. Across the 30. Across the 40. And a huge game of flags are down. Would have been a 23-yard pickup, but it's coming back. Holding, offense, number 74. That's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. We play first down. Even with the penalty, you get a sense of how comfortable they are with Trevor Lawrence running the zone read. They're reading the defensive end there, makes the decision. You see Carmen, the left tackle with the hold, basically a tackle. And really, he's one of the new pieces on that offensive line. Not sure about him yet in pass pro, but certainly a good run blocker. Gets called for the hold there. First and 20. ATM. Trying to bounce outside. To the 30. He's loose. To midfield. To the 30. 20. 10. Touchdown. 90 yards. I think he made up for the fumble, Tim. 
He most certainly did, and I think that Carmen made up for the holding penalty with a pretty good block as well. So that's an early one for ETN on his Heisman resume here on opening night. And the kick is good to make it 14 to nothing Clemson. It's a lag draw, good block, and then you see the power and the speed of Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne tying the longest run in school history, a 90-yard touchdown romp. Last time it was done for Clemson, 1951. And he was shot out of a cannon. Part of that explosive offense the Tigers will send after you. On the ground and in the air. Thomas into the end zone. He's going to bring it out. Looking for room. Surveying and he is tripped up. So a very short return as he elected to bring it back. Beautiful call and design here. It looks like sprint out, but it's a lag draw by this Clemson offense. Here's the sprint out coming back to Travis Etienne. But you've got to absolutely love this. Carmen, the big fella that just got called for a holding penalty, gets the pancake block. That's 6'5", 345 in space, Dave. And that is a big time block by one of the new pieces of this Clemson offensive line. He is down so 35 fella. pounds, Tim. He's lost 35 pounds, and Dabo Sweeney said it's great that he's made up his mind. Finally, he wants to be a great player. That was a great block. And they'll blow that dead. 5-31 to go, game. flag on the play Offense. here in the first quarter. Number eight, five-yard penalty remains first down. And that'll go against Georgia Tech and back them up. Now the Clemson defense led the country, allowing just 13 points per game last year, set the school record with 54 sacks. That also led the USA. Oliver trying to keep it. Right down the heart, gets to the 40, gets to the sideline for the 50, almost, and knocked out of play. Wallace finally getting to him. See it, it's another read. They fake to the back Mason, and then it's just Oliver right up the gut. They talk about him maybe being the best athlete on this football team, certainly their best runner at quarterback. Rips off the big one there. That was 39 yards. Looking to throw and looking to throw deep. And incomplete, overthrown, intended for Sanders. Used with the coverage. How about that open field move? It's outstanding, and that's on A.J. Terrell, who's a tremendous player at the cornerback position. Regardless of what happens on that on this drive, the fact that you get out of your own end, especially after a pre-snap penalty, Georgia Tech's offense really needed that. He'll keep again to the right, trying to slash ahead. Tanner Muse from the secondary with the coverage. And then part of an outstanding secondary, very experienced secondary for the Tigers. So it'll be third and five. Defensive coordinator Brett Venables lost a lot from last year, but Clemson has extraordinary coaching continuity. They lost just two assistant coaches since 2015. again off to the right pushing ahead Hughes again got there first two yard pickup so fourth and three and they're going to punt again Presley Harbin who can be a real weapon for them average 44 yards per punt last season in the ACC He's a tremendous punter. Obviously getting another opportunity here after the touchback previous timeout. 
Marion Kendrick back. And a knuckler. And he'll let this one bounce, and it's going to be down by Georgia Tech. 39 yard punt. Give you a look around the ACC. Some notable games coming up in week one, including Boise State against Florida State. That's been moved due to the hurricane on the way. Duke and Alabama in Atlanta, Saturday, 3 30. Yeah, and obviously, you know, pretty, pretty tough test out the gate for Duke. And a nice little look at Virginia Pitt on Saturday night, Dave. Know someone who's going to be there. I want to let you know that FSU game is on ESPN News. That has been moved. So 14 to nothing, Tigers. And a quick toss for Chase Thomas with the coverage. That'll bring up second down. Now certainly... Clemson is a giant favorite in the ACC. Probably no bigger favorite in all of college football in their league. Second and nine. All right, it's back to throw from the end zone. And completed the chalk to tight end. J.C. Chalk with the reception, the 6'3 junior from Texas. That was an eight-yard game. So it'll be third and one for the Tigers. Last year, the offense setting school records for points and total offense broke the ACC scoring record. Going to go with two tight ends here. Luke Price now into the game. Lawrence again doing a lot of running here early, trying to get to the 20. It's yet another read play where Trevor Lawrence is reading a defender. The guy crashes down on the running back that's running the football. He's going to keep it. I actually think he makes the right decision here. As you see them coming down on ETN. And then Trevor, do you see the strength? I mean, it, just to break a tackle and then get over that yard to gain line. You know, he's up about 21 points from his freshman year. Yeah. He'll fire that one incomplete. There is a flag down. Flag on the play. Swilling broke that up. He tipped the pass. Trey Swilling, the son of a legendary yellow jacket. Pat Swilling. Holding. Offense, number 59. It's a 10 yards penalty from the previous spot. He played first down. And Dabo Sweeney could not be more complimentary of his quarterback, you know, putting on the extra muscle. He said he's incredibly focused, like all great quarterbacks. He's hungry, driven, never satisfied. He says he's a grinder and a natural leader. One thing they're trying to get him to do this year is be a little more vocal. Down the screen. Dixon got free down the sideline. Finally, Carpenter got him. Let's go down to Maria. Well, you mentioned, Dave, Trevor Lawrence being a little bit more vocal. Well, he's trying to lead by doing things like bringing his entire offensive line over and feeding them, cooking for them, and talking more. They're standing him up in front of the entire team. And now I'm told by seniors that his message is on par with exactly what the team needs to hear, and he seems more comfortable in that position. 22-yard gain, first and 10. To piggyback on that leadership, you know, comment and, and, and seeing Trevor grow as a leader, most coaches, Dave, they'll just say, hey, hey we want you to be a more, more of a leader. We want you to talk more to the team. But I think what this Clemson staff is doing is giving him opportunities. They are setting it up, kind of teeing it up to give him those opportunities for him to grow. And I think it's a nice job of them recognizing that they can be a participant in helping him grow as a leader. Second and eight. getting tripped up. Actually, Justin Ross there with the catch and tripped up on the play by Henderson to bring up third down. 
So third and ten, final seconds of the first quarter. It's really been Lawrence with the legs, the biggest part of the story, along with ETN in the first quarter. Keeps it again to the 40. And tiptoes out of bounds with 11 seconds to go. 14-yard pickup. And I think this is an element of Trevor Lawrence's game that they want to see more of. He is a good athlete. When things break down, even on the design pass play, go make a play with your legs or extend the play with your legs to be a passer to get explosive plays down the field. Huge pickup on third down. End of the quarter. Tigers on top, 14 to nothing over Georgia Tech. Welcome back to ACC Network Primetime Football presented by Dr. Pepper. Recapping the first quarter, Clemson on top. 14 to nothing. Thomas with the muffed punt leading to the six yard touchdown run by Trevor Lawrence. And then ETN off to the races. 90 yards for a touchdown tying the longest in school history. So, second quarter, Tigers with the football. And a screen. Overton with the reception. So many weapons. Thomas with the stop. Andre Overton, the senior from Greensboro, North Carolina. Often used as a slot receiver. Brings up second and seven for the Tigers. Off the play action is Dixon, but nothing there. Bruce Jordan Swilling read that one fast. I have to say, I've been pretty impressed with Georgia Tech's defense, Dave, and how they're flying around, defending the run. Obviously, they gave up one big play, but it's really been Trevor Lawrence's legs that have hurt this defense. I'm sure Andrew Thacker is the guy. I thought Deshaun Watson graduated. Now, I, that one, I didn't know this kid could run this way. 177 yards last season. Here's the 10th play of this drive. Throwing again, longer this time, but too far. Intended for Ross. So, fourth and eight. Tigers on top, 14 to nothing. Wanya Thomas again back to receive the punt. Will Spires, who's the son of Clemson Hall of Famer Bill Spires, who had a long major league career. I called a lot of his games. Oh, yeah. That's how far back that was. Yeah, I was going to say. Gets off a very high punt. It's going to take a big bounce down inside the 10. 13-36 to play here in the first half. And the Yellow Jackets to come out on offense. We talked about Dave Patnode, what he wanted to do in changing over from the triple option as the offensive coordinator to the faster-paced passing attack. We have not seen that so far tonight. They've been staying on the ground, but he said everything when we started to teach him the new offense was brand new to these guys. A lot of these concepts they hadn't had since high school. They installed their base offense, but I think they're trying to do things that they know they can, you know, do well with the skill set they have, which is why I think we've basically seen a spread version of the offense so far with Tobias Oliver, a quarterback. Griffin, the freshman on that carry, and they love the young man. They think he's going to be a star. Did not get to the 20-yard line, Oliver with the carry. And Simmons again in on another tackle. So already third down and one. Another important call, fairly low snap. And it's loose. A fumble recovered by the Tigers. Another.
Another turnover by the Yellow Jackets. Xavier Kelly recovering the fumble for Clemson. And it's option football. You see it there. Oliver puts it into the belly of the back. Griffin never really has a good hold on it. And then Chad Smith is right there face on the football. And that's how it comes loose. Interesting to note there. The Clemson defense is playing cover zero, basically daring Georgia Tech to throw the football. They're playing run all the way. Really vulnerable for a big play, but just tempting them to throw it. Just inside the 15. First and 10 for Clemson. The handoff, and all the way through ETN, just like that. His second touchdown tonight, 14-yard touchdown run. And they do not have an answer for ETN. Not many do. The school record 24 touchdowns last season in a perfect 15 and 0 campaign. His second one tonight. You asked earlier if we thought that he may be getting overlooked. Not if he keeps doing this. No, sir. And not if the guys up front continue to block like this. Once again, a turnover, a huge part of it. Another mistake. Just an absolutely brutal mistake by the Tech offense. Ball's on the ground. The recovery. They get the ball down deep in your own. And another Travis Etienne walk into the end zone. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. Well, Georgia Tech, two turnovers. Clemson with the recovery, both in the red zone. That's two touchdowns, 14 points off the TOs. So 21 to nothing. Number one ranked team in the country pouncing right away. ETN in the thick of it with two touchdown runs. So 12.45 to go here in the second quarter. And the Yellow Jackets trying to climb back into it. First year head coach Jeff Collins knows it's been the mistakes. Really has. When you play a team that, you know, is better than you as you're going through a transition, fumble a punt in your own end after a three and out. Quarterback walks into the end zone. Another fumble in your own end leads to a Travis Etienne walk-in touchdown. Well, you cannot come into Death Valley and make those kind of mistakes. Oliver shovels it ahead, but broken up. It's Isaiah Simmons again as we continue to call number 11 as he tripped up Mason. Little play action, and we talked about it. 6'4", 230, runs in the low 4'4s. Four His length is incredible. Isaiah Simmons in space. It's hard to fool him. Question is, did Simmons actually beat ETN in a sprint <laughs> that no one was supposed to see over the summer? Would not surprise me. I think the coaches looked the other way when they went head to head. Oliver rolling right. Picks up a decent gain across the 30. Stopped by Nolan Turner. So it'll be third and two. So another important moment here for Tobias Oliver. On third down. Trying to keep it. Breaks free across the 40 and finally dragged down. Number eight, Tobias Oliver picks up the first down. Picks up the first down, 11 yards. He's made some nice open field plays. He's been an outstanding runner. You see, he's got Pitney in the open field. Obviously a bit mismatch speed-wise. He's able to duck underneath him. You see why Oliver is playing the position and why they are calling the game the way they are with him really as a design runner. Well, we had heard all week long they were going to shuffle in three different quarterbacks. Sticking with Oliver, who's very tough on the ground. Again, a 215-yard rushing day against Virginia Tech last season. He rushed for nearly 900 yards. 
On a carry off tackle and a broken tackle. Nice drive there by Mason as he stayed on his feet. Mason, a big physical back, 6'1", almost 220 pounds, runs with a lot of power. He doesn't have the speed of a net guy like ETN, obviously, but a lot of power. And Georgia Tech inherited some pretty good running backs from the previous regime. First and ten. On the handoff. Breaking free again to the 40-yard line. Jordan Mason once more. And that's six yards. So moving the ball here against the Tiger D. Now when Collins took over the program at Georgia Tech, he had so much work to do. He didn't have a single tight end on campus. He had 13 running backs. Makes it again to the right. Hard running here in the first half. Chad Smith with the stop. So third down coming up, third and one again. Collins born and raised in Georgia. He was a grad assistant at Georgia Tech early on. Served on the staffs at Alabama, Mississippi State, and Florida. Nothing doing on that carry. Dave, part of the reason there's nothing doing is basically Clemson said, we dare you to throw the football. They are bringing everybody up. There's not a single safety deep. And so it would not surprise me if at some point here, Dave Padmold says, all right, listen, we at least have to test you if you're just going to play us one-on-one -on -one across the board with no deep help. Going to go for it on fourth and one. Oliver lunging ahead. How about the energy out of Brent Venables, defensive coordinator? Prior to the snap, timeout. Georgia Tech, their first of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. 30 second timeout, we'll take the break. Venables in the middle. It was a weird spot there before the timeout. And Venables was absolutely furious. The Georgia Tech offensive line, look at them. They get set even before the officials properly spot the ball in the hash. They're ready to run a play. Look at the Clemson defenders. They're looking at their coach. Their coach is saying, hey, guys, wake up. They're about to snap the football. So, I, I, I am sure he is ripping them right now. <laughs> Say, listen, you're out of the field. Be ready to play ball. I think we can hear it from here. Fourth and one. What should the call be here for the Yellow Jackets? Well, listen, if they're going to give you the sneak, there's nothing wrong with go ahead and taking that. At the same time, they are begging Georgia Tech to throw the football. They're lining up in it again. All 11 guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Zero coverage saying, we dare you to throw it on us. Tied up. Nolan Turner with another tackle. His late father, Kevin, played at Alabama with Dabo Sweeney. He then want to play eight years in the NFL. You just can't do it. You're outnumbered, which is why Turner is unblocked. You, when you play in cover zero, you don't have a hat for a hat, which is why... You know, Turner is, is right there in the hole to make the play. You should be excited, Coach. You called cover zero, and they didn't make you pay for it on the edge. So they take over first and ten. Fred Venables runs the scout team for the Tigers in their practices, and he plays quarterback. And runs it really well, I might add. He does. I, like, I mean, running around, throwing on the run. And gets hit every once in a while. And it brings an energy to the way that defense practices, and certainly showing tonight he said when i get over critical and the defense really comes after me they'll nail me they don't think <laughs> twice about it something tells me he's been hit a few times yeah he said last year he took a shot on the nose a shot on the air he came up bloody His team loved it etn with the carry and stopped by owens gain of three brings up second and seven Trevor Lawrence, the Heisman Trophy candidate. Clemson has never won. Oh. And he throws the pick, an interception by Georgia Tech. It's swelling, trying for the end zone, and he's pushed out. And it was Trevor Lawrence who had to recover to make the tackle to prevent the touchdown. Trevor thinks that he has a free access throw 
to the outside. Swillen, who is having one heck of a night, just jumps it. You look at pre-snap, you see a corner here and a safety high here, but he thinks he's getting bail. But when you see this thing run, it's bail and, and Swilling just makes a great read and break on the football. That's an outstanding play by Swilling. four times all of last year one of those was against Georgia Tech and picked off tonight first and goal for the Yellow Jackets Oliver trying to keep it getting down close to the goal line stopped by Johnson Denzel Johnson A bizarre formation by this Georgia Tech offense we saw Clemson repping those formations kudos to the defensive staff being ready Really speeding up the pace, but denied again. Swilling now signing the board with his social media handles. Get the ball, it says. And listen, not to be confused with B.J. Swilling, Dave. At B.J., that is at Trey Swilling. Mention his dad, Pat, was a great NFL player. Five-time Pro Bowler, Defensive Player of the Year. A legend at Georgia Tech. Third and goal for the Yellow Jackets. And timeout. Collins asking for one here. Timeout. Seven twenty-two to go in the second quarter. Turnover is a big part of it early here at Death Valley. Total plays. Opening night on the ACC Network. Opening night for Clemson and Georgia Tech. Ball on the one. Third and one for the Yellow Jackets. Third and goal. Mason trying to power his way in. And a whistle. And off to the sophomore, Jordan Mason. And now they'll sort it out. 7.17 to go in the half. There was no play as the ball is not made ready for play. It will be fourth now. What's brutal about that is you just had a timeout. You had time to think about what play you wanted from the one-yard line. So on your menu of plays, that's one you really like. You just showed it, and it didn't count. That's frustrating. Still third down, third and goal. Oliver at quarterback. And the snap goes to Mason. And Mason is denied. And another big stop by the Tigers. Well, that's the second one they liked is, hey, we're going to look over the sideline, act like we're talking, and try to surprise snap you. You go back to Brent Venables screaming at his defense about not being ready on that fourth and one earlier. Obviously not caught off guard there with the trick play by Georgia Tech's offense. Fourth and goal, you got to go. defense. Travis Etienne fumble early in the game. You make a stand. Trevor Lawrence interception run back inside your own 10 yard line. Make another stand. That's sudden change defense and that's really well done by this Clemson group. Really it's a little play action rollout. It, it looks like he has Jalen Camp in the corner of the end zone. Just not able to get it up and down. Looks like Skalski, the middle linebacker, pursuing, gets his hand up, and that's what knocks the football in the air. 
That's and pursuit to the football and, and good team defense. The senior Denzel Johnson with the interception. So the Tigers take over. And a flag down. Tight end Luke Price. Ball start. Offense, number 79. The penalty is half a distance to the goal. First down. Now Lawrence has already rushed for a touchdown, threw an interception, and prevented a touchdown. It wasn't a bad tackle. I don't think Brett Venables is getting him on that side of the ball anytime soon. <laughs> Maybe not tomorrow. <laughs> but he did get him down, and it was a big play because it helped prevent the touchdown. Out of his own end zone. Trying to run it right up the middle. And that's ETN with the carry as he picks up seven. Second and six for the Tigers. Very warm night here in South Carolina. Not exactly a headline at the end of August, but a steamy evening as the reigning national champs get going on top. 21 to nothing over Georgia Tech. And looking for more. ETN with another powerful run. Pulling ahead, breaking tackles. Eventually stopped by the linebacker Jackson, but he picks up a first. And you mentioned powerful run. I and mean, when we saw the speed on the 90-yard touchdown, but when you see Travis Etienne in per person, I mean, you I mean, essentially tree trunks for legs. He's so much strength running in between the tackles. And I think they're even better at doing it this year than they were a year ago. So first and ten. Another handoff, and another big gain for the Tigers. That's Lynn J. Dixon. And they keep on moving the chains. Ten-yard gain. It's actually the same run play on the long ETN touchdown. That little lag draw has been successful for them so far. Dixon again, finding room on that left side. Tied up eventually by Curry. 11-yard gain. Dixon rushing for 547 yards as a freshman. 8.8 .8 yards per carry. ETN just over 8 yards per carry. So those two backs do so much damage. Lawrence out of the gun. Looking downfield. Looking deep. Looking for Higgins. And Nugs there. He caught it. He came up with it. He is in. What a grab by Higgins, 62 yards for the Tigers. It happens that fast. I remember he had that acrobatic juggling one-handed catch against Notre Dame for a touchdown in the Cotton Bowl. This was a beauty, too. It's an fought his way to the end zone. It's an outstanding throw when you think about Trevor Lawrence. Talk about responding. Last series out, you throw the interception. Well, how do you respond? Ball deep down the field with defenders at your legs, unable to step into the throw. Give T. Higgins the ability to go up and fight for that ball. It's not 50-50. It's 80-20. Impressive by T. Higgins. Coming up at the half, Jack Collinsworth, Mark Richt, E.J. Manuel, and Eric McLean will join you from across the field here in the stadium for the ACC Network Halftime Report. On this warm night, Guys get ready to get back to work. Well, how about this, Georgia Tech? Fourth and goal on the one. After the pick, they fail to punch it, and Clemson goes 94 yards for the touchdown drive just moments later. See Higgins' his fifth consecutive game with a receiving touchdown. And let's get down to Maria Taylor. 
Well, Dave, you mentioned it, that Trevor Lawrence, well, he's not used to making mistakes. Only four interceptions a season ago, but after he threw the pick in this game, I watched him on the sidelines, and he came over, spent a little bit of time with his senior center, Sean Pollard. He also walked out and watched the defense, cheered them on, and tried to will them to getting the ball back, and he went over and tapped everyone on the offense and said, it's okay, I'll get it back, and it was almost a calm, cool reaction to a mistake, and that's why he was able to go right back out there and throw that touchdown strike, guys. True to his word. Huh? A sophomore who led them to the national championship as a true freshman. Oliver off the play action, spinning free is Mason and diving ahead to the 35. Good hard running by Mason. And you just look at what Georgia Tech has done. Obviously, they have a desire to keep the ball on the ground, even as this you know, margin of victory for Clemson continues to grow. Skowski with a missed tackle there. On the handoff, keeping it on the ground again. Turner with the stop on Mason. Coming up on four minutes to play here in the first half. 28 to nothing. Clemson, the number one ranked team in the country. We mentioned that they have never won a Heisman Trophy. This might be the year. They have more than one very serious candidate. Oliver. He's going to go down. Swarmed by Clemson. Henry, the first man to reach him. And this is a new one. K.J. Henry, you see here, just gets up the field, gets to Oliver. You see the length and the athleticism of these defensive ends from Clemson. Just too much for that Georgia Tech offensive line and certainly hard to get away from them. And you see Oliver try to escape out there. Loss of eight. Two national championships in the last three years. And eyes on another one. And again, keeping it on the ground. The drive by Howard, Jerry Howard, who has not been used very much. The running back out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Talent rich Rock Hill, South Carolina. And a timeout. 2.58 to go. In the first half, and the Tigers on top, 28 zip over Georgia Tech. And Tim, anything about this first half so far surprising you? No, I mean, the mistake by Trevor Lawrence surprised me. You know, even great quarterbacks make mistakes. He certainly made one there. Trace Swilling makes a great play. But, you know, I, I can't say I'm surprised. I mean, we expected to see some fireworks. We expected ETN to run the football well. We expected these wide receivers to go up and make plays. And, we haven't been disappointed with either of those things. No, ETN, in fact, early on, 90 yards as he tied a Clemson record. And he's had a fine night already. Yeah, we talked about him having the speed. A little lag draw, get some help from the big fella up front. And then the speed in the open field to just absolutely break it. To a special, special player. And to think there are even more ways that they can use him. Obviously seeing here in the run game, but... As the season goes along, would not be surprised to see it more in the passing game. ETN, 10 rushes, 145 yards already. And another play that merits nothing for Georgia Tech. Oliver tied up by Spector. And it's a brutal three and out for this Tech offense because you look at the clock, Dave, plenty of time for Clemson to punch another one in before the half. Sure, for this offense. Well, they don't even need all 230 for, for <laughs> with this offense. So the Yellow Jackets to punt. Kendrick back again at the 20. And he booms that with a fair catch back inside the 20-yard line. They'll start the drive there. Well, this Saturday, we'll have our first slate of college football games right here on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. NC State hosting East Carolina. That's at noon. Virginia Tech taking on BC at 4 Eastern. 
Then Virginia squaring off against Pittsburgh. You'll be there for that one, 730 on our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. Yeah, good quarterback matchup in that game, Dave. Bryce Perkins, obviously one of the more exciting players in college football. Tremendous runner. He's a good passer. And then Kenny Pickett, an experienced quarterback, gets to play in a new offense. And I think they're excited about what's going on there at Pitt. Tigers going with four wideouts. And a whistle. 2-12 left and a flag. False start. Offense, number 76. Five-yard penalty. First down. That's Sean Pollard, a senior. Part of an outstanding offensive line in front of Lawrence. So it'll be first and 15 for the Tigers. Looking downfield, winding up right over the middle, and caught by Higgins for a big first down. Twenty-two yards. Higgins, the target again. Tigers on the move again. He wants to throw again. It's Ross. He makes a diving play. Would be 36 yards if it'll count. Was he in? I said it's a great throw on the go route because he keeps him up the field. It's single high. Just press man outside. Justin Ross is able to get on top of him. It looked good from where I was. I want to put it beyond Justin Ross to have come down with this one. They're going to take a look at this. Mm. Looked like that knee was over the line. You know, Swilling making a call right behind him. And I believe that he's out seeing that knee hit hit the line. It's a good call by Tony Elliott, Elliott offense coordinator for Clemson. When you think about Swilling is the one that jumped the route earlier. You get single coverage after having an aggressive corner up on your talented receiver. Go test him with the go route. They were close on this one, but but no catch. I don't think this one is going to be a catch. One more look on Justin Ross here. Six four sophomore out of Phoenix City, Alabama, noted for his acrobatic catches. Tony Elliott says he can be as good as he wants to be. And Swelling says he was out. Watch that. After review, the receiver's left knee landed out of bounds. That is an incomplete pass. Will be second down. Brings up second down. Minute 45 to go in the half. Second and ten for the Tigers from the 37. So it brings up second and ten from the 37. Clemson on top, 28-0 over Georgia Tech. Looking to add on. ETN with a reception. Trying to reach the 40-yard line. Zamari Walton wraps him up, and ETN wants to be a pass catcher. Not merely a runner. He's a great runner. Mm -hmm. But to get to that next level. And I think be a complete back. You know, I mean, you look at him, he's... Very few deficiencies in how he runs the football, but being a better back in pass protection and also as a receiver. Third and seven. That one tipped and incomplete. Jaquan Henderson got a fingertip on it and breaks it up. I think that's really just a miss by Trevor there. He's 
He's working a middle read, so basically a slot, running a go, kind of bending it into the post. And Trevor just throws it behind him, which is why that ball was tipped. Foot out in front, and that's a first down. Looks like he knows it, too. It's had a really fascinating first half. Marion Brown is back for the punt by Spires. And it'll take a hop with exactly one minute to go before halftime. So the Yellow Jackets to take over. Let's see if they bring in a new quarterback here. Lucas Johnson, who wears number seven for the Yellow Jackets. Tobias Oliver has played all of the first half to this point. Flag down here. And to the point about Lucas Johnson, we talked at the beginning of the game, Dave, about they feel like Lucas Johnson is their best passer. Here we go in a two-minute drive situation. There's no foul for illegal uniforms. It will be first down for Georgia Tech. So, indeed, Johnson is now in for the first time. Didn't see any action last year because of a broken foot. He was on crutches at this time a season ago. He has never completed a college pass. He's a junior. Let's see if he's throwing right away. First and ten for Georgia Tech. His first collegiate pass and broken up. Tyler Davis was all over that one, or intended for him, and it was Nolan Ryan. Nolan Turner with that outstanding play. Nolan Turner's been everywhere. Picks a big play on fourth down behind the line of scrimmage. Tyler Davis, one of the better Tech offensive players, drives on that route. Second and ten. Take his time. Down to nine on a play clock. Down to four. Finally the snap. Stepping up and running to the sideline. He's dragged down. Simmons with the tackle. He has had a big first half. I mean, he's just all over the place. You see the speed. Lucas Johnson is a tremendous athlete. Remember, he comes to Tech thinking he's going to run the option. Look at Isaiah Simmons close in that speed. They say he's low 4-4s, four but with his length, probably plays like he runs in the 4-3s. Mm. That, that is covering some ground by Isaiah Simmons. Sure is. Seven tackles for him already on the night. So Clemson will take a timeout here with 44 seconds before the break. Now take a look at this. You talk about athletic ability, and he can touch 11 feet. I mean, I'd have to be on a ladder to get anywhere near 11 feet. Here's the deal. He's going to go to the combine, and he is going to absolutely blow it up. I mean, it's going to be one of those scenarios where everyone knows he's a good player, and then when they see the testing numbers, it's just going to be eye-popping. 11-10. Goodness gracious. And as you talk about that incredible closing speed, 329 yards total offense here in the first half of the Tigers. This will bring up third and nine from the 26. Three receivers stacked to the left here for the Yellow Jackets. Really burning that clock. Low snap. Johnson steps up in the pocket. More coverage by Tyler Davis, the tight end. That was the man he was aiming for. 38 seconds before halftime. And Kendrick again will be back to receive the punt. I love offenses being aggressive. It's 28 to nothing ball game. You're aggressive. I get it. But now you give Clemson an opportunity 
still having a timeout to get the ball back, potentially in decent field position. Low punt. He'll take it right there. So time for the Tigers to do something. Simmons has been everywhere in the first half. And Trevor Lawrence and Clemson to take over. And ETN out there as well. He's had a huge first half. Closing in on 150 yards. 145 on 10 carries at the moment. Looking over the middle, incomplete, intended for Higgins. Well, Coach Sweeney was not very happy the last time on the last play. It was all over Kendrick. If he was surprised that he bare caught that punt with maybe that a little bit it. of room to run. Yeah. Had more room than he thought. Second and ten. Up in the pocket, fire to the sideline. Ross with a catch. Reference this earlier. You know, get, making plays outside the, the framework of the offense there. You see Trevor escape outside the pocket, throw on the run. Not a lot of room in terms of the window for that throw. I think that's an area where they feel like he can grow and they can be more explosive on offense. Picked up the first down. Back to fire again. Flushed out. Going short, and he throws it out. Flag down on the play with 15 seconds to go in the second quarter. Holding. Offense number 74. It's a 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. We play second down. That's Big John Simpson. Who went to the media day, the ACC media day, wearing a Trevor Lawrence wig. Dabo Sweeney said, that's going to go viral, my friend, and it absolutely did. Tigers with a 28 to nothing lead. The head coach not looking all that happy at the moment. Brings a first and 20. Back to throw again. Incomplete. Intended for Higgins again. You, know, you referenced Dabo not being real pleased. I think when you look at this two-minute offense, if you're a coach, you love getting the opportunity for these two-minute situations at the end of halves because it gives you a chance to rep it in a game. And really, if you think about Clemson's offense tonight, that's the thing that hasn't really looked like Clemson's offense. It certainly hasn't clicked on all cylinders the way it did against Alabama in the national championship game. On the move again. Evades one tackler, and he'll throw that. It's going to be picked off as he makes a mistake. Fumbled. And Georgia Tech retrieves it. Caleb Oliver. And that's two interceptions in the first half from a guy who was picked off four times all of last year. This one in the very final seconds of the first half. 28 to nothing. Clemson with the healthy lead over the Yellow Jackets at the end of the first half. ETN with 145 yards on 10 carries. One of those went 90 yards down the sideline for an electrifying play early in the contest. Let's go to Maria with Dabo Sweeney. Coach, I know that's not how you want to go into the locker room, but how would you describe that last series on offense? I don't mind going in 28 nothing. I want to go every every time 28 nothing. You give me that every game, that's how I want to go in the locker room. I guess the series is what I meant. Right? Yeah, I mean, that was sloppy. Bad decision right there, obviously. Bad decision. But, but uh, you know, hey, we're trying to be aggressive. We gotta, we're a little rusty. we got to get better. we got to play. It's the first game. But, you know, hey, we've done some great things. We've made some big plays on offense. Obviously turned it over early. And then uh, great play by them. They tricked us. They fooled us on the coverage. But we came back and made a couple nice big plays. And then defensively, man, got a couple turnovers. We've gotten points off turnovers. Started with a special teams big play. Great job by Will Spires. 
uh, bait inspector coming up with it, goal line stand. So, hey, I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased for the first half. So we got a long way to go, but I'm proud of these guys for being ready. All right, thanks, Coach. Got it. Well, his team is up 28 to nothing in their season opener over Georgia Tech at halftime. And after this short break, Jack Collinsworth and the crew will join you for the ACC Network Halftime Report. And then the second half here from Death Valley. Truly, we don't carry anything over. It's always about what's next. You gotta show up every year with something to prove. Welcome back to ACC Network Primetime Football, presented by Dr. Pepper. And back inside Death Valley, the number one team in the country, the Clemson Tigers, the reigning national champs, have a 28 to nothing lead on Georgia Tech. Dave O'Brien alongside Tim Hasselbeck. You know, Trevor Lawrence with a couple of turnovers in the first half. I don't think his coach is that worried about him. I don't think he's that worried about him, but I will say, you know, five first down penalties for that Clemson offense. A little bit surprising, a little bit of rust week one. A little bit of rust, but still 28 to nothing tells you a lot. That is also true. Certainly ran the football well and did get big plays out of their quarterback and talented wide receivers. He sure did. Ready for the second half. Georgia Tech to receive the kick. Lawrence also made an outstanding tackle to save a touchdown after he threw the pick to Swilling. So set for the second half. So I'll give you the highlights of the first half. ETN with 145 yards. And gets 90 of them here. It's a sprint draw. Really well blocked up front. Gets an outstanding block by Carmen, the left tackle. And then you see ETN speed. And then they run one back power. Run the power play. Untouched into the end zone. But really, I think the story is the defense. Nolan Turner is shooting his gun, getting into the backfield, making a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. And then a fourth down goal line stand. Play action pass. Skalski with great effort to the football. Gets it up in the air. Johnson for the pick. Georgia Tech on the first offensive play of the second half. It's Mason on the run. And Dabo Sweeney told us yesterday, he said the national championship is not our goal. He said we don't even mention it. He said, I don't like to have a goal where we don't have control over it. He was talking about his 2014 team, how he loved that team. They lost three games. They did whop Oklahoma in a bowl game, but he said, injuries, freaky plays, you can't control everything. Oliver back in there. He's tied up and sacked. And for more on Clemson, let's get down to Maria. Well, Dave, I was right here by the Clemson locker room when they came back out to the field, and Trevor Lawrence was the first one out running to the field, and I saw his offensive lineman having to call him back, but he's ready to start this second half. And Dabo Sweeney was really happy with the way his team responded to adversity, and one of those examples was Trevor Lawrence throwing the pick but hopping right then in there and making sure that no touchdown was run into the end zone so his defense could take the field. Yep, terrific play. Third and 18 right away on the low snap. Oliver stepping up. Nowhere to run. Xavier Thomas and Tyler Davis met him. Xavier Thomas, one of these guys that is a reload defensive lineman for this Clemson front. You see him get up the field. He's able to just retrace his steps and come back and make the play. And that's Tyler Davis. You mentioned it earlier, Dave. That's a true freshman starting on this defensive line, and they are excited about him, and they should be. They love him. They say you don't have to lead him. He knows where to go. You never have to lead him, even though he's just a freshman. Kendrick back. And at the 40. That's where the drive will begin. 28 to nothing, Tigers. Trevor Lawrence splits. No blitz so far in this one. 
Yeah, and as a quarterback, when you have a first half where you, you turn the ball over twice, you make some decisions that you probably want back. I think it's why he ran out of the huddle, so uh, ran out of the tunnel so quickly, Dave. Is you kind of want to get back out there, and kind of redeem yourself, have have a better half than you did the first the first one. ETN breaking free, getting across the 50, which says 150. Here at Clemson, 150 years of college football. First and 10, 156 yards for ETN. He'll take the football again, he breaks it. Across the 30, he's out to the races, and he's in the end zone. 48 yards and a touchdown. Well, he's been unstoppable, Tim. He's been unstoppable. He's going to get the credit for this touchdown. He does a nice job when he gets to the open field. But it was the guys up front getting him to the open field. You know, we talked to the coaches prior to this game. They felt like they were maybe more physical up front in terms of run blocking. We certainly saw it there. Well, he's already over 200 yards, 205 yards, three touchdowns for Travis Etienne. Is good 35 to nothing. I mentioned the big fellas. You see him pulling around there. See him on it off. You see Simpson. That gets it to the end of the open field. And he's shown us that he has the speed. ETN already with 205 yards by himself. That's a career high. Three touchdowns in a game tying his career high. And he has been outstanding to lead Clemson to a 35 to nothing lead. He is setting that Heisman bar very high indeed right away. So 12.42 to go in the third. Georgia Tech trying to get something going offensively. They were denied in the first half on a fourth and one shut down by the Tigers. That made Dabo Sweeney smile big time. And defensive coordinator Brett Venables. Clemson defense leading the nation last year, averaging just 13 points a game against them. Power Rangers were unstoppable. And they're trying to pitch a shutout here on opening night. Oliver to throw. And he has a receiver. He finds Howard. He's going to race down the right side. Muse gets to him to prevent a touchdown. Little swing screen to Howard. You see it here. He just gets up the sideline. They run traffic there. Foster who's dropping off into coverage, can't get wide enough. We out leverage the defense and give up a big play. 54 yards at the 21, first and 10. Mason a running back alongside Oliver. Trying to get to that right edge, he breaks free. And an outstanding carry, stopped by Terrell. So first and goal for the Yellow Jackets. They're on the move. They're on the move. This is exactly if you're Jeff Collins and you're, you're trying to kind of build a little momentum in your program, how you want to come out after a tough first half. Oliver with the pitch. Diving into the end zone, Mason. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. From seven yards out. And they answer. Did he get in? He certainly did. Just a version of the off option offense. You know, they're not running that flex bone triple option anymore, but they're running this option with Oliver. Does a good job of getting to the perimeter. Good blocking on the on the edge. That's how Mason's able to dive in. Wells for the point after. 35 to 7. An impressive drive here for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, an impressive three-play drive capped off by a little option offense down near the goal line.
150th year of college football. Head football coach for both Clemson and Georgia Tech was John Heisman. Won the national championship with Georgia Tech in 1917. Instrumental in several changes to the game, including making the forward pass legit. Heisman Trophy, of course, named after him. It's already gotten several mentions tonight here at Death Valley. So the Yellow Jackets, after a quick strike, 35-7 Tigers. And the speedy freshman, Joseph Engada, back to receive. And he'll bring it out. Gets by one man across the 20. And let's get down to Katie George. Well, as you guys could imagine, this Georgia Tech sideline has been an emotional roller coaster throughout this entire game. But Jordan Mason's touchdown just there rejuvenated the defense. Junior defensive end Antoine Jones got up to everybody and said, offense will take care of offense. We've got to take care of the defense. Let's go out here and get three stops. So 11.33 to go here in the third, 35-7. And some life for the Yellow Jackets. And Lawrence, a Heisman Trophy candidate in his own right. And it off, Dixon. Stopped eventually by Walton, but not before he got 17. And a first down for the Tigers. You just look at these bats for Clemson. I mean, you, they're getting to the second level, not being touched. It just speaks to how well the guys up front are blocking for him. Dixon again to the left. Trying to cut inside. Sophomore out of Butler, Georgia. So it'll be second and seven for Lawrence and the Tigers. On second down and seven. Another handoff for Dixon, getting some work here in the third quarter. Stopped by David Curry. Curry, one of the guys they are really looking at as draftable in the NFL, the senior out of Buford, Georgia. And certainly has an NFL future. Third and four. Lawrence wants to throw. Plenty of time over the middle. Caught by Lay. The tight end breaking free for a big strike. This is really well done across the entire offense here. Look at Lynn J. Dixon in pass protection. Red guard gets beat. He's able to step up and get good contact on David Curry. Really good job of feeling and just suddenly moving in the pocket to find Lay, the tight end, coming over the middle. That's good offense right there by Clemson. That's a big freshman, too, 6'6". Six, six. He's a big target. Wrencher on the carry, his first of the night, stopped by Kerr. So Darian Wrencher, the junior. From right here in Anderson, South Carolina. And the tight end, Lay, will come off. Second down and eight for Lawrence. Wrencher again has an opening. Nice game. He picks up the first down, rushing for nine. It's another nice run. It's also another nice job by this offensive line. They pull John Simpson. He gets out in front and leads the way. Wrencher does the smart thing and just follows the big left guard. ETN now back in. And Wrencher there with the carry with 8.34 to go. And we'll bring up second down and six. And a man down. Brentavius Glanton 
6 3 senior from Albany, Georgia. And we'll take the break. 8.22 to go in the third. Welcome back to ACC Network Primetime Football presented by Dr. Pepper. How about the offensive line for the Tigers now? 290 yards rushing, no sacks allowed. They've been outstanding. They've also had nine rushes go for over 10 yards. They're getting big plays out of the run game because of the guys up front. And into the red zone again, this time without a turnover. And a handoff. Edge Dixon, he's loose, he's into the end zone, touchdown from 18 yards. And the Tigers punch in another one. Good block by Bockhorst up front. There has been a ton of good blocking tonight. The guys up front really moving people around, which is why you have multiple backs having so much success. You just said they were at 290, up over 300 yards rushing now. You don't do that without the guys up front working together. It's a little bit of a draw action. Matt Bockhorst, a backup offensive lineman in the game. Watch it how he gets up to the second level. Gets up to the middle linebacker. That allows for the cutback to Dixon, which is why he's able to get into the end zone. Good job of pushing the double team, getting up to the second level, keeping your feet for a big guy. Uh, Lawrence loves the effort. Nice block by the 300-pounder up front. Bakor is to be known for his famous White House photo when Clemson visited to celebrate the national championship where he's beaming with a couple of burgers and he tweets, I mean, you're not just going to not eat the Big Mac <laughs> stack in a big pile right in front of you. Something tells me it wasn't the, the last Big Mac that he had or the first. <laughs> Clemson with a 42-7 to lead. And Sawicki to kick this one. Brown to bring it out to the 15, takes a stumble, down he goes. Well, this Saturday, we have our first slate of college football games right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. NC State hosting East Carolina, that's at noon. Virginia Tech taking on Boston College at 4 Eastern, then Virginia squaring off against Pitt at 7.30. That's our ACC Net primetime matchup presented by Geico. Yeah, and A.J. Dillon for Boston College. We're looking at Travis Etienne, one of the best runners in college football. A.J. Dillon stays healthy, certainly has the ability to do that as well. But Foster, his last year as a defense coordinator there at Virginia Tech, be fun to always watch that defense. Oliver to keep it, chased down from behind. Oliver with the carry for seven. And Kelly to bring him down, so second down. Trying to cut back the other way. Being chased and put down. Isaiah Simmons again, all over him. I can say, there is that there is that man again. Tobias Oliver, who has been described as the best athlete on Georgia Tech's team, tries to cut this one back. We talk about his speed and that length. Also a nice job of not going for the horse collar tackle. tackle. Isaiah Simmons just covers so much ground. An absolute eraser out there. Led the team with 97 tackles. Last season has a bunch of them tonight here on opening night. And right through the middle, Tanner Muse with the stop on Howard who got the carry. But a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Well, Travis Etienne, arguably the top returning running back in the country and a Heisman Trophy candidate has been putting on a show tonight. He's over 200 yards for the Tigers. Here's first and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Oliver, the pass and intercepted by Muse. Turnover, George. 
Georgia Tech. It was tipped by Specter. And Muse hauled it in for the pick. You can see Oliver trying to just kind of work a little option out to the tight end. Specter runs underneath it. Well, that's just good job playing the football by Tanner Muse. Running to the football. Good things happen on defense. Ball gets tipped in the air for quarterbacks. Tips and overthrows. Kind of your biggest nightmare. You would not be surprised. And it looks like as his defense is taken over, it looks like, it looks like Chase Bryce is in the game at quarterback. Secondary now. can play, and they can dance a little bit. So the backup is in. Rancher and a running back. He'll get the handoff off to the left side. And up on the way to Darian Rancher. Pick up a two yard. Rancher picking up two. Chase Bryce. Of course, last year, one of his main contributions was that great save against Syracuse. And I think it's one of the reasons Dabo Sweeney, when he talks about him, says, hey, this guy will play in the NFL one day. Thinks he'll get drafted. Obviously a unique situation here, but Chase Bryce has handled it well, and he certainly played well when he's had his opportunities. Yeah, he thinks he could start for just about anybody in Division I. He's that good. Pick up a five yards. So that'll bring up third down and three. So Bryce take it over the offense. A little more than five minutes to go in the third quarter. Rancher trying to dive inside to bring up fourth down. And up to Darian Richard. These are valuable snaps for Chase Bryce as it looks like they're leaving the offense out there on fourth down. You want your backup to get kind of critical moment plays. And so in a game where it's 42-7, to seven, a fourth down opportunity in the red zone kind of gives you that, you know, meaningful snap type of play in a conference game. Fourth and four. So the Tigers will go for it. Rolling right, looking to the end zone, a incomplete pass intended for Specter. Went for the dive and couldn't get it. It's important that we let everyone know that that is not Hunter Renfro back for his 15th year. <laughs> that is Specter going to the corner, a young freshman wide receiver that they really like. It's actually an excellent thrown ball by Chase Price. Puts it right on his hands. That's really one that you expect the receiver to make a play on. But again, it's important for both of them. It's important for Spectre. It's important for Chase Bryce to be in those moments. A new quarterback in now for the Yellow Jackets. The freshman James Graham will take over. And as they run right and Howard with the carry. Stopped by Jeffries. That's a three-yard gain. Now Chase Bryce last year was really an unsung hero. In Clemson's 15-0 season, he came into the game against Syracuse in week five. They were trailing in that game when Trevor Lawrence had gotten hurt. And he engineered a 94-yard drive that had come from behind 27-23 victory. Now things would have been different. This is going to be up top for the sideline, a diving effort, but incomplete. Jones with a coverage on Carter. Well, this was September 29th. Again, Lawrence was out hurt. Bryce next in line, 2.38 to go. Clemson was down by three, but an outstanding effort to keep that drive alive. ETN would have the go-ahead touchdown rush with 41 seconds to play, and the Tigers would win it. En route to 15-0. They also had a heck of a tussle against AM. And a flag on third and seven. False start, offense, number 24. Five-yard penalty, third down. That was Christian Malloy. 
I think one of the reasons that that it works for Chase Bryce is that there's a good relationship between he and Trevor Lawrence. I mean, it, you're okay backing up a guy that you understand you know, maybe the number one overall pick one day and waiting your turn, but also competing in practice every day. It seems like that's something that both guys really enjoy. Third and 12 for Graham. On the move to the 10. Did not cut back inside. Out he goes. Shoved out by Denzel Johnson. Gain of five. But fourth down. So Graham unable to do much of anything on his first drive at the college level. But they love him, too. They think the world of him athletically, they believe he could be a star. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned that they said Oliver, probably the best athlete on the team. They feel the second best athlete on the team is James Graham. And so, you know, I think it's one of the reasons we're seeing multiple quarterbacks for Georgia Tech is trying to find the guy that they can build around or at least morph this offense around in some of their unique skill sets. 42-7, Clemson. Back at Death Valley, that's us. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Maria Taylor, and Katie George with you as we launch the ACC Network here tonight at the home of the reigning national champs. Great to have you with us. And for long stretches tonight, the Tigers have looked like that, 42-7. Presley hangs one high. Kendrick. With the fair catch. The leaders tonight for the Tigers and ETN way out front in that look with 205 career high yards and three touchdowns. He's been outstanding. Referenced it. The guys up front have blocked really well for him. Somewhat of a disappointing night for Trevor Lawrence when you think about the two interceptions. Obviously, one that nearly got run back for a touchdown. And then some of those two-minute drive scenarios, they basically had two of them at the end of the first half. The offense really was the only time it didn't look very sharp tonight. One of those interceptions in the final seconds of the first half, so as you mentioned, didn't hurt anything. He's out of the game. Bryce back in a quarterback and a handoff and a big hole up the middle, but it closes quickly. Malusi. Jez Malusi, a 5'11 freshman out of Naples, Florida. We figured he would see some playing time tonight. Yeah, and he's the fourth back to enter into the game. And you just think about, you know, Clemson's been playing 15-game seasons. Having depth at running back, certainly critical, you know, for a long season. So Dabo Sweeney beginning to go to his bench here on opening night. And the keep. Not close to the 45-yard line by Chase Price. Taken down by Johnson. And he will pick up the first down, and he earned it. He did earn it. It was one of those ones where I was like, wow, I'm, I'm this wide open to, to, to run with the football. And all of a sudden, here come the defenders. Are, am I sliding? Am I going over the top? Sometimes that's a dangerous thing for a quarterback is getting caught in between. And off again as that offensive line continues to do its good work. At times they've really been spectacular tonight. Malusi with the carry as he picks up five. So second and five coming up on 90 seconds to go in the third quarter. Georgia Tech with a reworked offense, no longer a triple option attack. So that's a work in progress. That's Ingata finally getting one on that far left side. We have not called his name very much, even though in the open we talked about him quite a bit. Yeah, it's a zone read. You see the corner come and run support. That's why Chase Price flips it out to Ingata. 
and for a guy that big, you know, 6'4", you know, to, to make that type of move in space, you see short area quickness for a big fellow. That's impressive. Explosive, great speed, and great hands. And it's Dukes cutting free to his left and taken down. Michael Dukes, another freshman running back. You're seeing Gata on the edge here as Dukes bounces this outside. Look at him continue to work. And I think that just is kind of emblematic of this Clemson program. Doesn't matter if you're a freshman or you're a senior. Just the competition each and every day. You see guys in this situation still blocking to the echo of the whistle. Boy, the way they talk about Engada, he is the next great receiver at what is receiver you. Now to carry up the middle here for the youngster Dukes. Uh, all the way from Folsom, California. And didn't it dabble make it seem like... Like, he recruited Clemson. Like, hey, I know you guys are wide receiver <laughs> yes. you. Like, hey, here I am out in California. Don't forget about yeah. me out here. Come on out and take a look. Exactly right. And, and they did. And here he is playing for the national champs. It's an impressive Opening group of guys, 42-7. to seven. A Pretty impressive performance by this Clemson offense. Fourth quarter here at Clemson. As they take over at the 22. A 42-7 lead for the champions. Looking for the end zone. Touchdown. Ladson with the catch beating Swilling. And a sensational grab in the end zone. Just a freshman out of Miami. He had his knee scope just a few weeks ago. There was some doubt he would even play in this game. Well, he's playing. And he's running the go route, and he's getting on top of the defender. And Chase Price throws an absolute dime, a perfect throw. No wonder Dabble says he'll play at the next level. 21 yards. And the extra point to make it 49-7. to Georgia take rope takes the coverage, which means it's swelling man to man on Frank Ladson. He gets over the top, but there is no defense for a perfect throw, which that was by Chase Price. Looks like he even brings that in with just one hand. Frank Ladson, guy that kind of flashed early, even before Engada, as a is it a kind of an early enrollee, one of the many that Clemson had in the spring game. You should be happy. Oh yeah. And how about Ladson? Your first career catch goes for 21 yards and a touchdown. He's another one. I know we've hyped up and got up, but he is another one that they're excited to have here at Clemson. Certainly looks the part of, of T. Higgins and Justin Ross and is off to a great start. Well, so are the Tigers, 49-7. Here in the early seconds of the fourth quarter. So the Tigers to kick off. Marion Brown back there. Right at the goal line. And they cover him quickly inside the 10. They smother him. Doing a lot of push-ups tonight. He's going to be sore tomorrow. There's no doubt about that. I'm sort of looking at him, actually. <laughs> so, inches inside the 10-yard line. Jake Venables also into the game now, the coach's son. One of the linebackers for the Tigers. Trying to run out of there to carry by Mason. He's been a busy man tonight. He has, and he's run the ball well with good power. You mentioned Jake Venables. Really cool situation with his father calling the defensive plays into him. He actually sneaks through there and almost makes has a tackle for loss. 
and young group, shirt freshman. Yeah, young group of linebackers that are going to get valuable playing time and experience. Venables talked about, how, you know, you, you try to keep guys healthy, so you're not doing a ton of tackling to the ground, you know, this time of year. And so because of that, you know, you don't really know what's going to happen until the lights come on for these young guys and, and you see how they tackle in a live game. Davis with the catch. Now, of course, his dad is the defensive coordinator, but Jake has been coached in high school by another coach, and you know, Brent was telling us, you know, he'd get home from a practice, and Brent might tell him, hey, this is the way you might want to do this, and Jake said, well, wait a minute, we're doing it a little bit of a different way, Dad. And he else. Now, his dad's his coach once again. Big hit on the sideline on Howard. Right in front of the Tiger bench. Spectre with the hit. 230-pound sophomore from Calhoun, Georgia. And an Spectre who's been all over the field. Another one of these young players at the linebacker position that has just been flying around. And you think about Skalski, Chad Smith, Spectre, Jake Venables in the game now. A lot of young guys playing inside you know, that are new to this defense and showing up in their first opportunity. Flag on the run. Graham in at quarterback. Kelly with the stop. But a flag with 13-13 to go. Offside, defense, number 10. That's a five-yard penalty. We play second down. That's on Specter. Brent did say that, you know, it's a little bit different when you're coaching your, your son because you have to answer to mom if he doesn't exactly get minutes. Exactly right. <laughs> no question about that. Coming up on 13 minutes to go. Second and two. Graham, the freshman, running the offense here for the Yellow Jackets, trying to get on the board again here in Death Valley. And he wants to throw it. Incomplete. Intended for Blancato. Josh Blancato. a receiver who works very, very hard and has earned some playing time here for Jeff Collins. And they're going to go through some growing pains, particularly on the offensive side. I know they've given up 49 points tonight, but the offense after 11 years of playing that triple option. This is such a challenge to move it over to a pro-style passing kind of an offense. On the run, Howard trying to break free. It is going to be a tough transition, and I think it's evidenced by tonight when you look at some of the pieces that are in place. Clearly, they inherited some good running backs. Offensive line-wise, you know, you, you're looking probably for a different body type you know, to run this spread than you would when you were running that option offense. And so between that, guys playing receiver, the reintroduction of a tight end, which they haven't had since 2007, and then also quarterbacks that are comfortable in this system. Dropping back, and a pass is caught. And a long reception here by Blancato, who stayed with it for 34 yards. Yeah, and really, it's bad distribution here. You never want two guys running to the exact same spot. If you're able to get Blancato's able to get beyond the defense, and it's a nice throw by James Graham. Good anticipation is able to drop it down. They consider him an Amendola Edelman type of receiver. A little bit undersized, but very tough. Flushed out. Graham, and he'll step out. I have to think that Georgia Tech is going to want one of these quarterbacks to emerge and take control over the job. Yeah, don't I they think, have to? I mean, I, I think you do, just from a practice standpoint. Playing three different quarterbacks, having a different menu for each different quarterback, that's really not what you're looking for. But, you know, coaches will always tell players, hey, you make the decision. We don't make the decision. You decide by your play. And I think they're looking for someone to really emerge out of this group. Second and 11 for the Yellow Jackets. Graham trying to keep it across the 30. And we'll bring up third down under 11 minutes left. 
You, know, you think about it, too, for Jeff Collins, Dave. You, you know, there's changes along the offense, but I think there's changes in terms of everything that he's done, in terms of how he is selling the program, how he was recruiting to the program. You referenced it with the, the Instagram handles on turnovers. Seems like everything they are doing at Georgia Tech is a departure from what they were doing prior. Terrific stuff early tonight. Two A-10s from the 74th Fighter Squadron at Moody Air Force Base in Georgia. The flight lead is Captain Greg Dirk George. And his brother Eric George is the associate AD CFO at Clemson. And then earlier, right before the kick, running down the hill. One of the great traditions, as is the rock here at Clemson. Usually under lock and key except for game night here in Death Valley. The Tigers have rolled to a 49 to 7 lead over Georgia Tech on the low snap. Graham wants to go deep headed for the end zone and a touchdown. The strike for Brown the freshman from Tampa for six. Outstanding throw by James Graham and Amari and Brown you reference him, the freshman out of Tampa, he has unusual speed. He can absolutely fly. They get him matched up on uh, Kayvon Wallace, the safety. He's able to just run right past him. Good anticipation by Graham. And this ball is thrown early, and you can just see the speed. And a point after good, 49-14 Clemson. They said they wanted to have Amari and Brown, Brown give him some wrinkles. Well, here's one late running by Kayvon Wallace for the touchdown. ACC Network Primetime Football is presented by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville, and in part by Zaxby's. Hand-breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order, only at Zaxby's. Opening night, great to have Lee and Herbie and Reese and everybody here from game day to launch the ACC Network and the season opener for the reigning national champions and the Clemson Tigers, number one in the land, rolling tonight 49-14 to after a touchdown moments ago by the Yellow Jackets. Dixon trying to break free, but he's going to be tackled. 10.26 to go. Oliver taking him down. The Saturday, our first slate of college football games right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. NC State hosting East Carolina. That's at noon. Virginia Tech and Boston College at 4 Eastern. And then Virginia squaring off against Pittsburgh. That's 7.30, our ACC Network primetime matchup. Presented by Geico. Six different champs since 2013, but Virginia is picked to win the Coastal this season. I think they feel like they have a good shot, mainly because of their quarterback. We referenced him earlier. One of the more exciting players in college football. Good runner, good passer. And really, they know what they have with him now after a season with him as their starter at Virginia. Bryce Perkins, really excited to see him on Saturday night. Will Sweeney, that is Davos' son, 5A junior. So the coach's kids are getting into opening night. And in fact, he has two on the team. Redshirt freshman Drew Sweeney and Will Sweeney, the junior. We may see everyone tonight an injury here for the Yellow Jackets. You know, Debo Swinney's talked a lot to you and I this week about the culture of Clemson. I know that gets a lot of play justifiably with all the success they've had, winning two of the last three national championships. And Clemson will not take junior college transfers. They will not offer a scholarship to a freshman or a sophomore. Some programs do that.
they like to say their standards are very high. They're very selective. He's never had the number one recruiting class in the country. Now, <laughs> next year, right now they're ranked number one, but he's never had the number one class. Yeah, it just seems like they preach competition. They talk about kind of owning their footprint, talented players, you know, within, you know, the radius that they want to recruit around Clemson. And I think between that and then the continuity in their coaching staff in mm. recruiting and evaluating talent, they've done such a good job with that. Yeah, just two assistants have left the program since 2015. And that's Malusi, the freshman. Taken down by Charlie Thomas for the 12-yard pickup. As Clemson likes to say, it's not a catch-and-release program. There are a lot of guys who are not highly recruited who have found a home here, not the highest recruits in the land. Well, a great class expected in 2020. Bryce keeping his footing, cuts back to the center before he's taken down by Owens. And I think it's important when he talks about that where, you know, sometimes you're not always going to get, especially if you have a player that's going to be right in front of a top recruit, you may not get the guy that's the number one rated five-star guy. But you want to find the player that is willing to come in, learn and compete, maybe wait a little bit, maybe have a younger player playing in front of him like they have a lot throughout this roster. So, you know, sometimes people talk about their culture and you're not sure it really exists on the campus or within the program, yeah. it certainly feels like it is legit oh, and, yeah. and is something that he has already built and now is just trying to protect with the guys that he brings in here. He became the first head coach to win the national championship by defeating his alma mater in the route of Alabama, 45-16. to That ended the Crimson Tide's 26-game winning streak. Third and three. Now they have Texas A&M coming up, and then Syracuse right after them. Tries to pass. Powell with the reception. So they pick up the first down. Moving the chains here with eight minutes to play at Death Valley. You know, I'm struck just watching Chase Bryce play. As we watch Georgia Tech, they obviously are in search of a quarterback. Here's the second quarterback in the game for Clemson. He's a backup, and he's decided to stay here. Well, it seems like every quarterback that gets beat out wants to enter the transfer portal. Chase Bryce has decided to stay here, compete, get better, and obviously Dabo is, you know, because of the team and because of the margin of victory at times, he's going to get action in games like this, and, and who knows what happens beyond that. But Chase Bryce certainly looks like a quarterback that continues to improve. Certainly no slouch came in with a 40-7 and seven career record in high school. Very accomplished player, and he's done a nice job with his opportunities at Clemson. And when he does play, he gets to throw to this core of wide receivers. Not too shabby. Approaching seven minutes to play. And he'll fire it and complete at the 35. Student section hanging in there. Staying long into the night. They're not going anywhere. One of the great scenes in all of college football. When they come running down the hill, coming off the buses, and the place just goes absolutely bonkers. And it's deafening in here. Great theater. Third and five. Bryce going long. Off the fingertips of Powell. Could not haul that in. It's a good job by Powell. He was able to stack on top of Sims. The transfer is newly into the lineup. and That's one there. Listen, if you can get one hand on it, you can get two on it. I think Chase is like, hey, man, come on. That would have been my second one of the night on a go route. It's a field goal attempt by Potter. This will be 51 yards. E.T. Potter gets a leg into it, and it is good. 
from 51 to make it 52 to 14. Heck of a kick here by BT Potter. Listen, is there are there any deficiencies on this Clemson team as they try to repeat as national champs? Oh, we just saw the longest field goal in six years for the Tigers. And 52 yards by Potter to make it 52 to 14. And 6-11 to go here at Clemson. And some exciting new programming here on the ACC Network. Back in the summer of 2018 as part of Clemson's Paw Journey program with Paw standing for passionate about winning. Clemson took team members on a trip to Thailand. This right here is from any natty. We just swam in a river with elephants. I came to the Clemson to play football. Paw Journey, baby. We worldwide. Tigers definitely all in as they won a national championship later that fall. Look for more great all-access programming like that coming your way on ACC Network. So coming up in the last six minutes of this one. ETN with a spectacular first half, rushed for over 200 yards and a 90-yard rush for a touchdown. Trevor Lawrence with a couple of interceptions in this one. He also made a touchdown saving tackle after he threw one of those and that's overthrown. Intended for Carter. Now we may see the third quarterback to work in this one. We shall see Tyson Pumachan. 6'4 freshman out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. See if he gets an opportunity to get in for the Tigers. We figured we'd see at least six quarterbacks. <laughs> we knew that three would play for Georgia Tech. Question was how many for the Tigers? Graham will rumble through the center. You know, we're talking about, you know, seeing that many quarterbacks, which certainly would would be an interesting thing to, to see in, in any football game. I just feel like Clemson, when you look at, I think you go back to last year, they averaged playing about 72 players in every game. Played just a lot of guys, yeah. Just even managing that. And now some of it obviously happens when games are, you know, this lopsided. But they also will play, you know, a bunch of guys in critical moments of games and uh, you know, this one is off to to another start where you know, you're going to look at the guys that participated in games, young players, true freshmen, walk-ons, guys like that, that end up feeling like they're a real big part of this program. Will Sweeney gets across the 35, stopped by Carpenter. 52-14, Clemson. of emotion. Believe in what you do. Have passion for what you do. Welcome to the big time, Trevor Lawrence. Touchdown, Tigers. Iman throws it. Touchdown. Well, that's going to be on September 7. Next week, 3.30 on ABC. It was a heck of a football game last year. A two-point victory for the Tigers. So it was razor thin. It was a different Clemson team. There's no question about that. There was some bad weather in that game. Kelly Bryant, you know, was, was still playing quarterback for Clemson at that time. And so I think that, you know, when you just look at the difference in team, maybe the kind of up against the ropes mentality that they had a year ago, I would expect Clemson to be pretty ready for this one next week. Look at those chances to win up and down the schedule. Well, they have lived up to that tonight with ease, really, on top 52 to 14, trying to break off another one on a run. It's Pumachan who's now into the ball game. 
the freshman quarterback, Tyson Pumachon, 6'4", about 210, Bridgeport, Connecticut, and ranked the top player in Connecticut. He threw for over 5,000 yards in high school. And really what makes him special is he's an outstanding runner. And so, you know, kind of what we've seen tonight is his zone reads with Trevor Lawrence and Chase Bryce, certainly something that they feel like they can do with Pumachon. Duke's diving in. A lot of the freshmen getting an opportunity. Good night for her. Oh, yeah. Good night for her. Question. Still up. Going to be up for a while. <laughs> Cotton candy. That'll do it. Second down and six. And another carry off to the right here by the Tigers by Dukes again. He's getting a lot of work, the freshman out of Charleston, South Carolina. We've seen Frank Ladson make his first catch. Joseph Engata, as far as the young wide receivers with so much talent, adding to the incredibly talented veteran wide receiver core for Clemson. From a John to keep. And gets across. He picks up the first down before Chico Bennett made the stop. So I think a lot of people are going to take a look at the final score. Whatever it turns out to be, but the Tigers rolling big time here against Georgia Tech. They're going to look at ETN's numbers. Three touchdowns, over 200 yards rushing. And going to say it's business as usual for the number one ranked team in the country. I think that's a pretty fair assessment because of the way they ran the football, because of the way they played defense. I think the encouraging thing, if you're Dabo Sweeney and his staff, is that you have 52 points on the board right now, and there's a lot you could actually clean up. You know, when you think about, uh, you know, the, the turnovers early in the football game by that first group that was out there. Take it across the 40. Pumachon keeping that. And at 38 to go. And amazing to think Dabo Sweeney parlayed a seven game audition as the interim coach into the burgeoning dynasty here at Clemson, winning two of the last three national championships. Many believe they will get back to that championship game again. And who knows, maybe Alabama waiting for them again. They'll tiptoe out on that far side. Approaching one minute to go. I feel like when you see Trevor and he, you know, he's, he's, you know, flips the hair back, I feel like he's just showing off at that point. You know what I mean? <laughs> you take it personally? Well, like we get it, man. You know what I mean? We get it. Yeah. You see what Hunter Renfro said about him. He said, you know, for all the great things that Trevor Lawrence has done and will do, he can't play golf worth a lick. You know, <laughs> he'll stand over it. He'll take about eight practice swings. He'll fix his hair. He'll take some more practice swings. Then he'll shank one. He said he could have done that in three seconds. So it's the one thing he doesn't do well. Bumachon spinning inside. I'm still waiting for Trevor's response to that. I, 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 <laughs> right. I wonder how, how true that is. And, Although it seems to be good at just about everything else, so would it surprise me if he's pretty good at golf too. Again, he made a touchdown saving play with a hit before the goal line after he threw an interception earlier tonight. Final seconds here from Death Valley. And the Tigers are going to roll to an impressive win. And here comes the Gatorade bucket. Well, certainly the offensive star, without question, was the running back, Travis Etienne. ETN 12 carries 205 yards. So this one in the books is a big Tiger victory 52 to 14. 
Meets in 200 and five yards. It's a career high and three rushing touchdowns. That ties his career high. This is the celebration. This happens after every victory here at Death Valley. As they will happily celebrate the win to get the season off to a great start in their defense of the national championship. So our final score tonight, Clemson 52 and Georgia Tech 14. Up next, it's all ACC. For Tim Hasselbeck, I'm Dave O'Brien, and we send it over to the gang.